Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the second part of our uh, public lecture on bananas in New Zealand. Um, growing bananas uh, in New Zealand uh, is the, um, is the uh, topic of uh, the first in this lecture. Um, we all know New Zealand is not a banana growing country, but um, because of uh, global warming and uh, the uh, size of the industry, there's a lot of interest in uh, doing research and development on growing bananas in New Zealand. And that is the catalyst behind uh, this public lecture. Um, <clears throat> currently, uh, bananas are grown uh, in Auckland in the backyards of uh, people who uh, uh, like to grow them. Um, but uh, some companies, including uh, myself, are already starting to grow them uh, in uh, a bigger scale than the uh, backyard uh, gardener. And we have discussed in the first uh, lecture the uh, plantain, cavendish, and ladyfinger varieties. Uh, they're actually species, but uh, I use the word uh, variety uh, to describe the three of them. Um, so uh, it is uh, a very, very interesting uh, and very hot topic at the moment. There are many ways of uh, multiplying and uh, replicating uh, new banana plants. I have uh, mentioned in the uh, first uh, lecture that uh, most bananas uh, do not produce viable seed. These are the bananas of commerce because of their triploid uh, genetic makeup. And uh, so they are um, multiplied uh, using vegetative means of uh, planting suckers, corms, or tissue culture. Uh, the suckers, as I have uh, mentioned in the first uh, lecture, are the new plants that have come out uh, of the uh, main corm, uh, which is the uh, underground part of the uh, banana. And the small shoots coming out uh, are called the suckers. And uh, in this picture, there's a very, very big sucker, uh, which uh, I have shown here on the picture on the, of the left, um, how you actually plant them. Uh, you dig a hole about uh, one square foot, uh, and uh, you put in the uh, um, comb and uh, fill it in. Very easy. Uh, now this is uh, multiplication uh, using the comb. You can actually use uh, any old comb from uh, harvested plants. Um, just planting the uh, uh, underground part is shown in the picture uh, in the left. Uh, you just dig a hole, put in the comb and cover it. And on the right, uh, you can see here, uh, there's uh, two suckers coming out. And you can see the roots uh, coming out of the comb into the ground surrounding the hole. Uh, one, two, or more suckers can come out of uh, the comb, depending on the size of it. 
And the uh, third way of uh, producing uh, new banana plants is uh, tissue culture. And um, the buds on the corm are taken out. The corm can be uh, from uh, suckers or old corms. And these buds are grown in uh, sterile conditions in uh, bottles like this one here. Uh, a media uh, consisting of all the nutrients, vitamins and uh, trace elements that uh, the plant required to grow. It's uh, been mixed with uh, some agar as the substrate so that the uh, plant can be planted on it just like uh, uh, planting the banana in the soil. Uh, as you can see here, the banana is growing and there's quite a lot of uh, multiple shoots coming out the side of it. And this is uh, the most modern uh, way of uh, multiplying uh, any kind of plant, not just the bananas. You can generate uh, millions of plants uh, from just one shoot, one bud, uh, because of the proliferation or all the multiple uh, side shoots that develop. And uh, we can see here this one there, two, three, four, uh, there's probably five at least. But some of these uh, uh, bananas in tissue culture can generate 20 or 30 side shoots or buds from the first one. And so uh, it's very, very fast. Uh, you can uh, produce uh, 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 hundreds of thousands of plants from just one bud in a year. And that's what the uh, commercial companies use to uh, produce uh, new plants because, because they're very easy and, and quick. Uh, if you use suckers, uh, you're going to be waiting uh, 50 years or more to get a million plants. But uh, from tissue culture, you can get a million plants in, in just one year. So uh, very, very high tech uh, uh, approach. And these bottles are in sterile uh, rooms uh, on uh, shelves uh, under controlled uh, light conditions because they need uh, light to grow, just like any plant. And uh, very, very uh, high, uh, highly managed uh, kind of uh, operation. And here you can see that uh, the plant has been taken out of the bottle and uh, planted uh, in uh, compost or soil in trays. Uh, in the background there you can see uh, hundreds uh, of little plants with uh, a close-up in the foreground here uh, being held up uh, by the grower. Uh, and these plants uh, can grow into a bigger one like this one here. Uh, this is uh, ready for the field. So uh, after the field are um, turned over and prepared and uh, um, lined or furrowed, then these plants are planted with irrigation. So they grow very, very quickly. Uh, and that's uh, the third way of uh, producing bananas. The first one is using suckers. The second one is using the corn. And the third is using the buds in tissue culture. Very uh, highly scientific uh, operation. Uh, here, I have made a uh, rough drawing of the banana plant. So we can uh, have a look at the different parts. Uh, it's a very, very interesting uh, uh, plant, as we can uh, uh, see. Uh, I'll explain why. Now, the top uh, part here is the folded uh, emerging leaf. And uh, 
you can see the, the leaves here, which I have labeled. Uh, the stalk of the leaf is called a petiole. And here's the banana bunch here. The stalk of the banana bunch is called the pitancol. The pitancol is actually the true stem. Uh, the true stem of the banana plant. But uh, in the case of the banana, the strength of the uh, stem, uh, or what is known or called the pseudo stem, uh, is uh, actually from the water pressure inside it. So uh, Around the true stem, which I have drawn here in a dotted line in the middle, there are the pseudo stem. The pseudo stem are just uh, leaf sheaves that surround the true stem, and the water pressure inside the leaf sheaves themselves is uh, actually uh, what gives it the strength to hold the whole uh, plant up. Uh, and that's why uh, I say it's a very interesting plant because we are all familiar with uh, plants or trees that the stem or the trunk is uh, uh, what we see. But in the case of bananas, uh, what we see is the pseudo stem or the leaf sheaves or extensions of the petiole. Uh, the true stem itself uh, is inside and we can see it. Uh, it's only when the bunch comes out that we can see it, and it's called the pitancol. And here's the uh, fruit uh, here, normally referred to as a bunch, bunch of bananas. And here uh, is the uh, male flower, uh, referred to as a bud. And uh, the sheaves around it is actually the petal. Uh, which is uh, what you normally see the, uh, the flowers uh, on normal plants. And then uh, at the base of the petal are the male flowers. Uh, and this uh, uh, whole thing here is called the bud, the, the male bud or male flower or blossom. Uh, down at the bottom here are the dried leaves. Uh, bananas actually generate a lot of compost from the dried leaves. And uh, it's a very, very good uh, plant to uh, uh, use on uh, slopes because they, they tend to generate a lot of uh, uh, compost or soil. Uh, at the bottom here is the corn and uh, we can see uh, a lot of suckers coming out with leaves and these small ones here are called the sword suckers uh, they're just starting to produce leaves but they have emerged uh, out of the ground and then the roots at the bottom uh, so that is the banana uh, and uh, very very interesting uh, we will talk about the bunch later because on the bunch there is uh, what is known as the hand. Uh, the hand is a bunch of fingers and uh, we can see that uh, later. Uh, here's a picture of the uh, stem in cross section. This uh, circle in the middle here is the true stem as I've explained. And around the true stem are the pseudo stem or the leaf sheaves, extensions of the petiole. And in this picture, you can see uh, two of the larger suckers uh, on the side. Um, Naming and differentiating different species and varieties of bananas uh, is actually a, a very, very uh, good way of, uh, uh, I suppose, uh, 
uh, showing how they are related. And uh, even uh, with the animals, uh, it's still the same uh, with plants. They all use the Carl Linnaeus uh, system of uh, binomial uh, uh, classification. Uh, in the case of bananas, uh, there are two names, the genus name and the species name. And uh, as we have talked about in the first uh, lecture, the first name is uh, Musa and the second name is uh, Paradisiaca or Sapienta or Achiminata. That is uh, the uh, Carl Linnaeus uh, system of uh, naming uh, plants and animals. Uh, they have a genus and a species name. Uh, I have always used the uh, name uh, or word variety uh, loosely uh, in the first lecture. But uh, usually uh, it's uh, a species uh, which have, um, as already mentioned, two different uh, names. Uh, when you uh, talk about uh, different uh, species, they are based on uh, uh, differences that you can see. Uh, which include, uh, like in this case, the stem. On the left here is uh, the stem of uh, a hopper plantain with uh, very heavy uh, dark uh, pigments on the stem, the pseudo stem. And on the right, a stem of uh, uh, a misiluki uh, ladyfinger banana which does not have the heavy pigmentation. So that's one way of uh, differentiating these two species uh, before they fruit. So uh, uh, most people uh, don't uh, know this very easy way of uh, differentiation. Uh, they usually wait for the fruit to come out before they can tell which is which. But this is one way of uh, differentiating the two, is the pigmentation of the pseudostem. You can also use the uh, bunch, the hands and the finger shape to uh, differentiate between the species. In this case, uh, the hopper plantain on the left has a uh, rounded short uh, finger. At the top here is a hand of uh, fingers and the finger is short and rounded with a rounded end. Uh, in the middle is a uh, Missiluki lady finger. Uh, note that the first one here is a plantain and the second one here is a lady finger. The lady finger uh, Missiluki here has got a pointed ended uh, finger uh, and it's got angular uh, sides. So uh, it's very, very easy to uh, differentiate. The plantain has got a uh, short round uh, fruit and rounded end. The uh, lady finger, Missiluki, has got a uh, pointed end with angular sides. And uh, the Cavendish, the third picture here, uh, has got uh, longer fingers and uh, rounded ends. Uh, the one you see in the supermarket is usually uh, angular, like the Missiluki because they have been ripened uh, uh, earlier. They are harvested earlier before they fill out like this one. This one is uh, ripening on the tree, so they are already very mature and, uh, and filled out into rounded uh, uh, fingers. 
but normally they harvest it to earlier and uh, ripened uh, for uh, the supermarket. So that's why they have angular sides. So that's how you can tell the differences between the three species. The Hopa is uh, Musa paradisiaca. The Missiluki ladyfinger is uh, Musa acuminata. And the Cavendish is Musa sapientum. The um, Banana is one of the staples of uh, most of the Pacific Islands, and they uh, cook them green. Uh, that's why uh, plantain is very popular with uh, Pacific Islanders, because uh, uh, it's, a, it's a staple. It's uh, one of the very, very uh, popular foods uh, in the islands, they cook them, and in this case, this is a uh, misiluki, which has been boiled, and uh, then the skin is removed. So you eat the, uh, the banana inside, just like the ripe banana, together with your meat or whatever dish uh, you are eating your banana with. Um, bananas are also fried. Uh, in this case, this is a uh, Cavendish. On the right is a picture of uh, fried uh, green uh, bananas. And on the left is a picture of uh, fried uh, ripe bananas as a dessert. So they can be used for uh, uh, frying uh, as a uh, staple, which you can use with uh, uh, fish, for example, in a fish and chip uh, dish, or you can uh, use as a dessert in the uh, picture on the left here. And of course, the most popular use of the banana is uh, for uh, ripening. And uh, on the left is the uh, common dish the most popular and uh, common uh, uh, supermarket uh, banana. Uh, most of the bananas of commerce uh, you'll find in the shops is this one here, uh, the common dish of Musa sapientum, according to Linnaeus. Uh, the one in the middle here is uh, a Missiluki ladyfinger. And you can see it's also uh, very, very nice looking for a ripe banana. But this one here is a hybrid. It's a Missiluki hybrid because, as I've explained before, the Missiluki has got a pointed uh, angular fruit. But this one here is very, very similar to the Hopa. The Hopa here on the right, which is uh, the plantain or cooking banana, Musa paradisiaca. Uh, it's very, very similar, or it looks almost the same with uh, this uh, lady finger here, which is uh, Musa acuminata. And I think this one here is a hybrid. Uh, it's got the same shape and looks, but the flesh itself is different from the hopper. Because when the, the green hopper is cooked or boiled, the flesh is yellow. But uh, this one here, when it's cooked, the flesh is still uh, the same as the uh, banana I've shown you before. Um, it uh, doesn't have any color. So it's a very, very interesting uh, uh, development. And I am keeping an eye on this uh, uh, species, probably variety, this one here. Might be a very, very interesting uh, uh, variety to uh, cultivate. Uh, that's the end of our second uh, uh, part of the uh, banana public lecture. Uh, in the third lecture, I will uh, talk about the uh, uh, plant protection issues that are facing the uh, 
global banana industry in relation to New Zealand growers and what people are doing here in New Zealand. Because uh, as I've mentioned in the first uh, public lecture, the plant protection issues were the major uh, downfall of uh, banana production in the Pacific Islands. The uh, cost of the production uh, was just very, very high due to uh, foliar disease, insects, nematodes, and post-harvest problems. And um, it's a very interesting uh, area to look at with regard to uh, these new developments of uh, the bananas in New Zealand, which might uh, become a, a major industry at some stage in the future.